There have been a lot of questions about two-stage carving in easel. Today, I'm hoping to answer those questions. We're going to do a project with two-stage carving. We're going to start out with the roughing bit of an eighth inch, and then we're going to finish with the 60-degree detail bit. Let me show you how we're going to do it, and hopefully, we'll answer all the questions. After taking the cedar board over to the planer, I planed it through uh, several times to get rid of the roughness. And quite frankly, it was a very rough cedar board. And I brought it over to the table saw, measured the 8 inches that I needed to be able to have for this sign, and I cut the cedar board to the 8 inches in length. The next thing I did, I just simply turned the board to be able to rip it and I measured over the three inches that I needed for the length of my sign and then I cut that so now I have my eight by three for my sign. I took the work piece over to the X-carve and mounted it to the waste board using one bump stop and two clamps and secured it in place. Next I took the ruler and I marked the center of the workpiece because I'm going to use the center for my X, Y axis to have that as my zero point rather than using the bottom left hand corner. Today we're going to do some two stage carving and the first thing I've done is opened up a new project window and I'm going to go over here and set my material dimensions and the dimensions I'm going to set is 8 inches for the x-axis, 3 inches for the y-axis. This now will give me the work area that we're going to be doing. The next thing I want to do with this two-stage carving, I want to be able to create a pocket. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up a box, a rectangle, and I'm going to have that drop right into this area. Now what I can do is use the uh, shape and actually set it. Since this is 8 inches long, I want to be able to have my box 7 inches. And that's going to give me a half inch on each side. And on the height, it's set for 3 inches. And I'm going to set that for 2 inches. Again, that'll give me a half inch on each side. And I've already got the two inches set in here. So now with that in place I can do this type of maneuvering to put it in place but it's far easier to go up to the edit, center the material and it's done for you. Now as for the depth of cut I don't want it to cut that deep. I only want it to cut about oh, let's see here we're going to lower this to about a half or 0.5 of an inch and I could do the same thing I could use this to do it but it's far easier to be able to just type in 0 0.05 and that creates the correct depth for me. The next thing I want to do is add the text. So I'm going to come up here to the text menu and we can pick any text that we wish but I think I'm just going to do the homestead and I'm going to backspace this out and I'm going to put in 200 subscribers because that's what I'm celebrating today and I'm real proud of that I think that is awesome accomplishment and I couldn't have done it without the help of everybody on the uh, channel being able to make this successful so now I'm just going to reduce it down slide it over and we're going to make it fit into this opening for this pocket that we have. So I'm going to leave that right there for the moment. And I'm going to do the text one more time. And we're going to add in there yesterday's date, which was 
the date that we actually hit the 200. Okay, we'll shrink this down. And we'll grab it and we'll bring it down in place. All right. We'll make that a little bit smaller. Doesn't need to be that big. Okay, now then, I can hold the shift key and select the other one at the same time. Now with both of them selected, I'm going to go back up here to my edit. Select edit, center to the material, and that will have it dropped right into the center of the material and in center of my fill box that I have uh, set up. Now then, I don't want this to cut this deep, so while I'm here, I want to cut this at zero depth. So there we have it. 200 subscribers, May 16th, 2018. And we're going to do this with two-stage carving. Now what I'm going to do over here on this side is I have an eighth inch bit already in place. That will do my first carve. But I don't want to do that for the final carve. I want to be able to come in here with a 60 degree bit, the bit, to do the final carve. So by hitting this one, this brings up where this is my first bit and this will become my detail bit. Now then, let's take a look and see what this is going to look like. I think that's going to look quite nice. So, to be able to simulate that, to see how long it's going to take to do, we're going to go ahead and select the simulate. And this will take just a moment for it to process. Okay, and 7 minutes for the roughing pass and about 17 minutes for the detail pass. So now then, what I'm going to do is I don't want my X, Y axis to be here. I want to be able to have it dead centered. So what I'm going to do is select the entire project and I'm going to come up to the shape. I'm going to select my center position right here and then I'm going to set the coordinates in at zero and zero. That takes care of my X and my Y axis. And that now has moved it there. Okay, we're ready to go ahead and carve at this point. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit the carve button. Confirm the thickness. Material is secure. And we are doing the roughing pass to begin with. So I'm going to hit continue. We are using the eighth inch straight bit. So that is confirmed. And now we're going to do the probe. Okay, we're going to go ahead and connect this probe and put that underneath there. Connect the clip and then we'll continue to follow the instructions. So that part is done. The next thing is we need to make contact here. And that is done. Okay, the probe is finished. The next step, it says the Z probe is put away. Yes, it is. We set the X, Y axis to the center. I actually always do that first, and I want it here on the center because if I have it down here and I cut away the material for the pocket, it's going to be harder to re-zero the Z-axis when it comes time to do the finishing detail bit. So this way I'm having it on the center and I'll be able to do the probe here on top of the letters. So the XY axis is set, so I can check that off. Now I can turn the spindle on.
Okay, the roughing pass is now complete. I'm going to go ahead and change the bit and put the 60 degree bit on it without moving the machine other than on the Z axis. That will keep my X, Y axis exactly the same and I will not need to set that again. Okay, I've changed the bit, put in a 60 degree V bit and I'm in the process of probing now. One thing that I think causes or may cause from people the problems you have the little fuzzies that are around here that will actually change the height of your Z axis. So I took some sandpaper and just knocked that down a little bit. So the actual height is the original height of the wood and not accounting for the little fuzzies that are sticking up. You don't want to change the height from the original. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and set that squarely onto the wood connect my Z-probe and continue this process. And the Z-probe is put away. It asks now to set the XY axis. Well that's already done because this did not move on the X or Y axis when I changed the bits. So that is set. So now all I can do is turn on the signal and I sprayed the project with black primer, sanded with 80 grit, switched over to 220, lightly sanded, and it was finished. I've had a lot of people ask about two-stage carving in easel, and there were many, many questions that were associated with the two-stage carving, and I hope today I was able to answer those questions. And I want to thank everybody for their support and for subscribing to my channel. And I want to thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.